This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art, Main Street Bookends of Warner. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host. We are coming to you from the First Baptist Church of New London. It is a community of people who share a common commitment to personal and spiritual growth as followers of Jesus Christ. Members and friends of this community strive to work together to understand how we can be agents of God's grace and redemptive healing in our world. Now a few words from their pastor, Charles Glidewell, on the God who is present. As a pastor, I try to keep up with what's happening in the world. And one of the things that's been on my radar lately is all the talk about loneliness these days. I recently read that before COVID forced us into isolation and social distancing, there was already an epidemic of loneliness in the United States. One doctor says that more people in the US suffer from loneliness than diabetes. And apparently this is a problem all over the world. Uh, the British government, for example, has gone so far as to appoint a minister of loneliness to tackle the problem they have there. We're social creatures. Um, we all know this intuitively. We're all made for companionship. Uh, after God created Adam, he said that it was not good for man to be alone. And so God made him a suitable partner. The Bible also tells us that we are made uh, not only for companionship with one another, but that we're actually made for companionship with God himself. When God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden, it says that God himself walked in that very garden. A part of God's plan from the start was for human beings to know and experience his presence. And history is filled with people's experiences of God's presence with them. One of my favorite stories in the Bible about God's presence is found in the story of a man named Elijah. Uh, maybe you've had an experience like this. Elijah, at this point in his ministry, he was on top of the world. And in the next instant, for various reasons, he was brought low. He was filled with fear and discouragement. He felt like the loneliest soul on earth. And after running away into the wilderness, it says that even there, he experienced God's presence. Well, from there, he runs to a place called Mount Horeb, which is known as the Mountain of God. And it says that the word of the Lord came to Elijah there, and he experienced God's presence with him there on the mountain in a gentle whisper. God's presence is still with us today. I've heard so many firsthand accounts from today uh, from people who have told me about how they've prayed about something going on in their lives, and God almost immediately showed them what to do. And for Christians, uh, this really shouldn't be surprising. Jesus told his followers that though he was going away, he would not leave them orphaned, he would not leave them alone, but that his presence would be with them in the form of what we call and know as the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was present then, and he's present today. The God of the Bible is the God who is present. One writer is quoted as saying, we cannot attain the presence of God. We're already totally in the presence of God. What's missing is our awareness of it. The Bible puts it this way in one of the Psalms, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you were there. If I make my bed in the depths, you were there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even there the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. God is present. He's always present, whether we feel it or not. We're just often not aware of it. Back to God walking in that garden with Adam and Eve. It says in one place that one day God was there walking in the garden, and it says that the man and the woman hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Sometimes we don't experience God's presence because we're hiding from Him. I've done that. Most of us have at one time or another. And sometimes we're just distracted. Most all of us can compare notes on how busy we are, and sometimes we find that we just don't have the space in our lives to experience God's presence. Or maybe our circumstances have made us feel like we're very much alone. 
It feels like God and everyone else for that matter is absent. I just want to remind you today that the encouragement and the comfort of the Holy Spirit is available to you. As the Bible says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. And Jesus assures us with these words, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So that's my prayer for you, that you will ask, that you will seek, that you will knock, and that you experience God's presence in your life. May it be so. Thank you, Charles. Their diverse community is varied in non-denominational background, yet values the traditions of their Christian faith. They come together each week to celebrate and worship, to learn and serve using the gifts and resources of their members to contribute to the mission of sharing God's love. When we come back, Meg Cowan from the Newport Opera House will join us to review their fall happenings. But first, these words from some of the local businesses that make this show possible with their underwriting gifts. <laughs> 